Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Tactical Arbitrage, the product search page. So in the last video, we had a look at the product search page and how to get a bit of information up into the top here before initiating a search. And in this video, we're going to look at some filters. So I'll start by putting in something simple like target and I'll just use the default category here, which I believe is toys, maybe action figures. And we'll do a start page of one and a last page of one. Now, I won't use any filters at all here. I'll just use the submit button. And uh, we can have a look uh, how in the view data page, the products begin to appear. Okay, and so on. So um, I expect this category has been trolled through quite a bit. So I don't expect too much uh, in the way of positive ROI in this particular sample search. But I do see one item here. Um, let me just check if it's in the stock. That actually appears to be in stock at Amazon online. Uh, so this looks like a uh, gross ROI of 38%, a sales rank of 60,000. And uh, I can see a lot of reasons why uh, people may consider buying this. The gross profit's under $4, and uh, for that reason, perhaps you might want to shy away, um, especially when you take shipping into Amazon into account. But for the sake of this presentation and for the filtering, uh, for the filtering demo, I think it'll be fine. So what we want to do is show you how filtering works, and I will show you how that product would normally appear in a search. So I'm just going to... I canceled that scan with a little blue X there and I'll delete the data. And we'll bring up that exact same search again. And we'll just do a single page scan again. This time I'll put in some filters. So the first filter, store, like first I should say that these little blue question marks here will also explain everything I'm about to say, but, um, and possibly more succinctly than me but uh, I will go over them one by one. So store price adjustment, uh, let's say for instance, you've gone to uh, Retail Me Not, and one thing we did do recently is, um, if you have a look on this sidebar, uh, and down the bottom here it says, click here for uh, coupons at Retail Me Not. Uh, we're not affiliated with Retail Me Not at all, it's just sometimes people like to know if there's vouchers or coupons for a site, and this gets you a quick uh, extra page to see what's going on at the moment. So um, it looks like some categories uh, have some sale items on at the moment, uh, like $5 off, $50 select items. Um, and you can go in there, like this one for instance excludes toys by the look of it, excludes toys. So uh, I, won't, I won't do uh, anything from Retail Me Not there, but um, I will put in a sample, say 10%, because I, normally when you're doing product searches, you are looking for uh, categories which have got promotional discounts because you're much more likely to find those positive ROI products when searching like that. But for this uh, demonstration, I'll just put in a, a sample figure there like 10%. Now let's say you've gone to Ebates or somewhere like that and you've got a cash back or maybe you've got a raise card and the raise card is a good, a good amount like 15% uh, cheaper, maybe $35 for a $50 card or something like that. You might want to incorporate that into your store price adjustment too. Um, I'll put 5% here as if it was an Ebates cashback or something. Actually, I don't think Ebates will give you 5% at ca uh, cashback, but some sites will. Maybe uh, Doubly, their VIP setting, I think will give you a decent amount on target. We've just added in this uh, uh, state sales tax. So if you're in an area which does not have um, any kind of uh, tax exemption, or your state has got a sales tax, which is actually, unfortunately, most of the states. Um, be, me personally, I live in Australia, so I get everything sent to a 0% uh, FBA prep and ship um, tax uh, prep house in Oregon. And uh, so I'm 0% there as well, but I thought I needed to include this filter for those people who do want to have, uh, who do want to include that in their calculations. So for the sake of this, I'll put 9% or 9.25% right back onto the price. Now let's remove all ranks over say 200,000. So if Amazon uh, it throws back a result that the product we're looking at is 
200,001, um, it'll remove that product from uh, our view data page. We can remove products with a certain amount of sellers. Let's say we don't want any more than you know, 50 sellers on a product. Um, if you like, we can remove oversized products. And you, you might decide to remove out of stock products. In some cases, it's good to keep that in, especially if you live near a bunch of local Targets or Walmarts and uh, you wanted to see whether or not they have that item in stock. You might leave remove out of stock products unticked and uh, therefore you can go out and uh, check if the item's in store, even if it's not, um, not found online. Um, get Amazon lowest price. Now, get Amazon lowest price is, I might reword the way this sounds, because basically what, what this should say is, um, if there is an MF seller, and the MF seller is not offering free shipping, like let's say for instance, they're selling something for $12.95 plus $5 shipping. If in the settings menu, you have added your MWS keys, that's the only reason we would ever use those keys. Um, what it will do is take the $12.95 and add that to the $5 and the figure it will present on the view data page will be $17.95 and therefore calculate a more accurate return on investment. If you do not have that data in there, no big deal, but what it will do is this box will remain unticked and what it will do is um, it'll just, it'll show you the, the price in red instead of green and basically that's saying only for those MF sellers where they've got a shipping price as well, it won't have the shipping price added on. So in our example, it would be $12.95 um, is what we would be shown and the return on investment would be calculated accordingly. I really like to have my MWS keys in there because they're super easy to get and uh, it gives you a much more accurate figure uh, when coming across those, those MF sellers with shipping. And I actually like to be on the buy box with those guys because I find that Amazon favors the FBA seller by as much as a dollar or two sometimes. So, um, so keeping, keeping that uh, in mind when choosing whether to get your MWS keys for the settings page uh, will give you that little bit of extra data. Now removing products with an Amazon price of less than, this is fairly straightforward. If the product on the shelf is, you know, $14 or something, you may never want to touch it because the, the gross profit is only going to be maybe a couple of dollars when all is said and done. So you can remove anything under a certain amount to uh, save you a little bit of uh, filtering later. Remove products in Amazons with keywords. So let's say you're in a beauty category and you come across uh, a tube of toothpaste, but when that tube of toothpaste is matched with the tube of toothpaste in Amazon, Amazon is actually showing you a four pack of toothpaste. So it looks like there's a higher return on investment, but when you look at it a bit more closer, you can see that uh, it's not actually a match up because you would need to buy four tubes of toothpaste over here to actually make that a match. Now we are adding some features to make, uh, make it so you can calculate those four tubes of toothpaste and create the matchup, but for now, um, you might want to just remove a few things. So uh, we might say, if I see the word bundle, get rid of it. And if I see the word count, get rid of it. Or if I see the word pack, get rid of it. So by putting those in there, um, every time you see the software sees an Amazon product with any of those keywords, it'll flick them to one side as well. Now remove and add to the source title when searching on Amazon. So um, Sometimes, sometimes on a clearance page, um, the people have the the source store may have done things like uh, put clearance at the start of every title. That kind of really messes up our matching algorithms with Amazon. So it's nice if you can just um, have a look at a page like that and say, "Wow, every single title here says big clearance dash new dash." Um, and then the product name. So you might put clearance there and then comma space new there. And so if it, if it sees the word clearance or new, um, it'll it'll remove, it'll still do the, the match, but what it'll do is it'll remove those words from the source title before starting to match up with Amazon. So if it was clearance, comma, new, 
Uh, so it's clear, clearance, new Nike uh, Air Max 90 shoes, then it's only going to try and match 90, Nike Air Max 90 shoes on Amazon and it'll remove those words clearance and new. So that's a little handy filter to use. Um, we'll remove it from this one, we don't really need it. Uh, add to source title is much the same. Um, a good example of this is uh, 511 Tactical. None of their uh, none of their product names actually say 511 on the actual product. So when it goes to search on Amazon, it searches for some fairly generic sounding uh, shirt and short names, and this can override that and deliberately add 5.11 Tactical to the search. So so you might want to put in there 5.11, and then everything on that page or that search, it's going to add 5.11. Uh, tactical to that and therefore Amazon's going to match uh, an increased number of matches by seeing that algorithm in place. Um, only calculate FBA return if Amazon sale price is at least so many times the store price. Okay so um, let's say uh, we set this for two. Two times. So if the source product is $10 and Amazon finds it for $19.99, if you've got this set for two, it's just going to toss that away. But if you've if you if it's seen at Amazon at $20, then that's uh, two times as much, and so it will keep it. Personally, I like to set that for around about 1.7. The reason being is that if I find a product for $100, which is selling for $170. Um, I may still want to examine that because after the fees, particularly if it's an electronics item with a lower referral rate, um, I, I will possibly still see 40% return on investment in there and, uh, and it, might, it might still be a worthwhile um, item to jump on. Uh, 1.7 is, is probably on the low side. Many people probably at least set this for two, but that's just how I play. I like 1.7. Cost to prep per standard product. So if you're using a prep and ship house, they might have a flat $1 per sta to standard product or $1.35 with um, some of the recent price increases. And uh, you can insert that here. Now, um, if you're prepping at home, you might find that each item's only costing you 20 cents worth of material to put in there. Or you might wanna, you might wanna basically leave that empty. Uh, but you know, Packing materials, boxing labels, it all costs money. So, so putting in a, a figure there is, is good to help you um, work out that return on investment as close as possible. And again, there's a figure there you can put if it's an oversized product. We've removed oversized products from this particular search, so I won't bother putting in anything for an oversized product price there. Now, a cost per pound to ship to Amazon approximately. So this is um, a how long is a piece of string kind of uh, conversation because if you're sending boxes to multiple shipping destinations at Amazon uh, you'll find at the end of the day the UPS price per box is going to work out on average over time around about a certain amount per pound that you will feel most comfortable putting in there and that's going to probably come down to the kinds of products you're sending in the warehouses that normally pick up those kinds of products and so on but um, as a roundabout figure, you might find that 80 cents per pound is reasonably accurate. Uh, once again, that can change if it's oversized products and so on, but um, for, this, uh, for this particular purpose, we'll, we'll put in cost per pound as 80 cents. Now these, last, these next two are fairly straightforward. Um, only show me something in the view data page if the gross profit is at least $3, for instance. Um, only keep the data if the gross return on investment is at least say 20%. You, you probably want higher figures here, but the more, um, in the early days, I actually encourage you to use less filters just so you can kind of see the results that are coming in and sort of see um, how the software is working and showing, you know, showing what on a page, um, the negative ROIs, the positive ROIs, the filter differences. And then when you get to know the software, I suggest you go in here and start um, adding these filters in there until you've got a little a little uh, system that you like. And after a search, you can always click this Use Last Filter Settings button, and it'll automatically populate that with your most um, your most recently used filters that um, 
you, you, you'll be surprised, don't change that much from time to time. Some things like sales tax will stay the same, um, scan in and scan out, and you might find that you often keep this remove products in Amazon with keywords. These settings down here, you might keep the same over and over. So it's good to have this use last fil filter settings uh, feature there. So down the bottom here, we've also got also show no match results. So I put that in there because sometimes um, sometimes this tactical arbitrage can't find a match between the source site, whether it's the UPC or the title, and what Amazon's got to show. That doesn't mean it's not on Amazon. It's just that sometimes the way that the source site has presented the information to us hasn't given us a direct enough route to um, to finding a matched product on Amazon. And so we essentially end up with a no match. If you include the show, show no match results uh, button in there, it'll also bring those up. And then what you can do is you can manually match those up and it will add those to the global database. And we'll talk about that more when we get to the view data page. I actually like to include also show no match results, but it really depends on what site you're in because sometimes that can fill up the view data page pretty fast if, they're, um, if it's a site with less matches than normal. Um, you may even for some reason decide you only want to see the no match sites, only no match products. And in that case, a lot of these filters get grayed out. Um, you can still do the store price adjustments uh, at the source and you can still decide whether or not um, to have a look for an out of stock product. Uh, but uh, in this instance, we're going to leave that one turned off. Now I'll do a separate video for bulk. I did a different I did another video on, on bulk categories the other day, which I might, um, which I might talk about, uh, or I might just link to that in another, rather than do another video, because that was fairly, fairly complete. Um, but for now, we'll hit the submit button and see what kind of results we get. Over here, um, we've got the running process. Now you can stop a uh, scan at any point by clicking the little blue X. Uh, it's kind of like a little Windows, a Windows X uh, on the corner of the screen there. It tells you the page it's currently scanning, um, the current page that it's on, and the current product that it's on. Now because this uh, target has 60 products per page, uh, it's skipping along through this and it's currently up to 20 products uh, on that page. So um, also we've got a bunch of data down here. Um, the first item actually fulfilled all of our criteria and so it was added to the list. Now the next one didn't make the price filters. The oversized filter kicked this one out. Um, there was too many sellers on this one. And uh, as we go down, we can see that there's various reasons why that the software decided to remove a product from the list. And uh, what we're looking for is a few additions. Oh, we had another one added there at product number 42. And we've almost gotten through to the end of the list here. So our filters were fairly aggressive and we've, uh, we've actually ended up removing a couple of items there. Okay, so let's have a look at these two items that were found. Um, in fact, we might do that in the next video.